Okay, good evening to one and all. On behalf of Philosophy Family, I extend a hearty welcome to all of you to be with us on this Sunday webinar. Today, we have a very beautiful topic that is Garbha uh, Sanskar, Darshan the devotional world of the Vedas. And today, we have invited Dr. Rina Patil Padurkar, Assistant Professor in the Department of Philosophy, Ramadi Dunjan Junjungala College, Mumbai. And we have already witnessed the brilliant talk of uh, Madam Dr. Rina in the previous time. And uh, she is a very brilliant scholar in philosophy. And we have uh, witnessed her brilliant speech and presentation. Uh, I don't uh, want to give a big introduction of Dr. Rina because Dr. Rina is very familiar with philosophy family. And today I can see the faces of Madam Professor Roman Chakravarti, Madam Amita Balmiki, who has introduced Madam Rina in previous time. We extend our gratitude to Professor Amita Madam for connecting Dr. Rina with philosophy family. And we are very fortunate that Dr. Amita Balmiki always encourages the philosophical reflection of philosophy family. And we have been also benefited by Professor Roma and her sweet words are very praiseworthy for philosophy reflection of philosophy family. And today the topic is very important for all of us, that is Garbha Sanskar, nurturing the emotional world of the fetus. And it is a common topic for all of us. And this topic has ethical perspective, philosophical perspective, psychological perspective and social perspective. And if we go to the deeper level of this topic, then we can know how Karma Sanskar is very, very important for all of us and uh, which can which can create the total perspective, the total personality of a human being and to know the detail from Dr. Rina because Dr. Rina Madam is a very uh, is a, uh, a brilliant expert in this topic. I, I welcome Madam Dr. Rina Patil Padurkar. I welcome all the senior teachers of philosophy who are associated with us in this webinar. I welcome Madam Sravani Misra to be with us. I welcome Thorani Sen to be with us in this Sunday webinar. I welcome all the viewers to be with us in this Sunday webinar. I welcome Professor Pramod Kumar Das, the admin of Lucy family. And with this, once again, I convey my gratitude to all the viewers to be with us in this Sunday webinar. And I request Madam Dr. Dina Patil Padurkar to commence her speech. Over to Madam Dina. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Such a kind and humble introduction which you gave. I think I really do not deserve it. Whatever knowledge I have gained in this area, I'm going to present in front of you. I hope I can able to do the justice. Uh, thank you, uh, Das, sir, for all your kind support, whichever you have given us time to time. Uh, Maharana, sir, Amit, ma'am, thank you so much that you have introduced me to such an intellectual field. I'm really obliged to you, ma'am, and all the intellectual stalwart who was present here. I'm starting my topic right now. I hope I can able to do the justice. Uh, is it visible? Yes. Visible, 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 visible. Okay. Yes, sir. This is my topic, Garbha Sanskara, 
nurturing the emotional world of the fetus through yoga what garbha sanskara is that we need to understand because prior to garbha sanskara in our uh, scriptures we come across that there is a garbhadhan sanskara it means that indicates that we need to inculcate such kind of seed in our womb or in the progeny which we require which will be healthy the way it is indicates that if we require a healthy plant we require a healthy seed so if we require a healthy progeny naturally we need to nurture the progeny so garbha sanskara is the proce process to achieve physical mental spiritual emotional social development and perfection for the baby as well as for the mother so because we know that in sanskrit garbha means fetus and sanskara means imbibing the good values among the fetus so let's try to nurture the virtues among the fetus itself in the womb because prior to uh, the feet uh, the child will come into this world the, we want the child to be virtuous so garbha sanskara is every emotion you feel every thought you think every action you take every habit you build during the pregnancy so the knowledge of garbha sanskara dates back to ancient scripture and it is included in the ayurved and yoga it is traditionally believed that a child's mental and behavioral development start itself in the womb as it can be influenced by the mother's emotional state while she carries the baby garbha sanskara is one of the 16 sanskara prescribed for human in our scriptures it is highly beneficial for physical mental and uh, spiritual development of the fetus because it is uh, stated that pregnancy should be by choice it should not be uh, uh, by accident because we want to take the appointment of the fetus we don't want the fetus in our uh, in the womb of the mother by the accident so it's when we are talking it indicates that that today's advanced science and cutting edge technology had proved that the unborn unborn baby can not only listen feel but respond by its own way more than 60% of brain development occurs in the intra uterine period so if we want a whole baby which means alert attentive brilliant healthy receptive intelligent spiritual and virtuous baby then parents must be whole parent parent cannot be divided in their or you can say that disturb in their physical period it is very essential to educate and imbibe good values among the child because uh, because it indicates that parent is playing a essential role i am talking parent means both mother as well as father while imbibing the good values among the fetus because it is taking care of child health not when the child come enter into this world but before the birth of the child because it is important when the child the baby is conceived in the mother's womb both the parents must take care to see that that they themselves are in a proper healthy condition they are mentally sound and uh, virtuous as well as spiritually elevated to give a birth to a healthy Uh, meant um, healthy which is uh, physically healthy mentally healthy as well as spiritually one so we want a supraja we don't want just praja but we want a supraja so we want a baby who is devotional social sensitive having a good grasping power impressive powerful dynamic who is victorious who is attract attractive who is artist who is a brilliant it is who is intelligent talented strong and it is like we can possible by welcoming the baby with the good thoughts by imparting the samskaras to the fetus because to improve his emotional health we need to see to it the parent also have a proper emotional health to increase the active participant of both the parents during pregnancy is matters it's not only the mother who has to pay play a important role but parent as well as the family need to play a very important role and to uh, increase the courage and confidence of the mother during the labor because then only we can able to get that whole baby when the whole parents will be there the concept of eugenics appears to be prevailing in the indian culture since vedic time some mantras about how conception occurs the deities of the fetus are found in the rigveda and atharva veda for instance one of the mantras states that 
prajam cha dhritam dravidam cha dhritam it means bestow upon us the progeny and affluence similarly one of our upanishad carries the title garbha upanishad the upanishad of fetus it has been written by sage pipalada thousands of years ago and the entire information about the fetus is compiled in it by the means of mantra so you, as well as the eugenics is originally the greek word which means you means good and genesis means the creation that is the birth so we want to create a good thing good baby therefore it is a science of giving birth to a fine progeny means procreation of a healthy generation prenatal care is born out of obsession for creating an excellent human race we don't want just human race but we want a excellent one with the virtues it is not only intellectual that indicates that the life because we as i earlier stated that the life begins at the very moment of the conception and the conception and birth are the normal natural events and they are by appointments they are not by accident so the fetus and the mother communicate with each other the fetus get experience of sensation a loving atmosphere foster the fetus development of fetus depends on the principles of both nurture and nature during the pre birth and post birth stages the brain is most sensitive during the fetal stage the child needs love and caring from both the mother and the father life is a continuous process in other world birth and death are not two isolated even understanding this elucidation is must for us parents are in reality genetic architects whatever a mother does during her pregnancy will manifest thousand times in the baby as more than 2 lakh 50000 cells those are developing every minute during the pregnancy and genes are being chosen by nature through epigenetics the baby's brain developed by very fast in the womb and takes physical mental emotional and spiritual clues from the surroundings garbha samskara practice are special efforts taken to stimulate a baby's senses gently so that the cortical development is at a maximum level it has been documented that the activity of the mothers during pregnancy in the form of prayer that is good rational thoughts mana shakti that is positive emotion conversation with fetus that is talk or the expressing feelings that is touch is not only recognized by the unborn baby but it has positive impact on the physical and mental health too on the baby of the baby if you if you want to if you want to give the best to the society and serve the society nation and the world then garbha sanskara is one of the answer for it it is very powerful tool to craft a ethical and spiritual baby it is not easy but it is not impossible also today the world is full of conflicts violence anger and chaos through garbha sanskara a mother can give a birth to a genius baby full of virtue balance from within happy satisfied a peace lover and who works towards the betterment of the world at large and spiritually elevated today's children are the future of the world if we work on the foundation we can build a strong citizen to serve society and make this world a better place to live in sare guru ji from maharashtra he said that procreating a child is like creating an idol of god so we are not creating the child but we are creating god itself the concept of prenatal education is an exceptional powerful one it is not only culture the future generation from prenatal stage but it also result in the positive change in the previously related two generations therefore in a way it is a social revolution today in the 21st century science can peep to some extent into the inner world of the fetus the only interference that can be drawn out of it is that the fetus too expresses or possesses a mind and emotions rather it has its own distinct emotional world too and we have to nurture that emotional world the stories from our puranas are the example for it the story of abhimanyu is well known in mahabharata abhimanyu the son of arjuna learned how to enter the chakravyuha the strategic arrangement of warriors to entrap and defeat the enemy during the war between kaurava and pandava when he was in mother's womb he had heard and remember the narration of the technique by krishna to subhadra during her pregnancy 
but in between the subhadra sleeps so he really don't know what how to come out of the chakra viva so you can just see what uh, when you speak to the fetus what fetus can do before the birth of buddha his mother mahamaya had followed certain specific rituals in the month of ashada she celebrated the seventh day festival and gave alms to the poor she did penance by giving up some of her pleasures too after the festival mahamaya had a dream in which a bodhisattva by the name of sumedha asked permission to take birth in her womb she happily consented later a brilliant son was born to her in the pleasant environment of lumbini he became lord buddha when pralada's mother was pregnant kayadu with him she used to listen to devotional song uh, in the sage uh, narada's ashram therefore even though pralada took birth in the rakshasa or the demons family he became devotee of lord vishnu rishi udalaka was a great saint he had a disciple called kahod the rishi gave his daughter sujata in marriage to kahod once when sujata was pregnant kahod was reciting some shlokas the baby in the womb realized the recitation was is incorrect and asked him to correct it kahod was very angry he put a curse on his son so that he would be born bent in eight places the child ashtavakra was born bent in eight places the father's angry thought affected the baby when the tabla master zakir hussain was in her mother's womb his father great ustad allah rakha used to beat lightly with his fingers on his mother abdomen and we know the great zakir hussain sister lorna zmk was found uh, has found that the fetus will respond rhythmically to rhythms tap on the mother's belly the famous british violinist yodi menon believes that his own musical talent has partly come from his parents too so singing playing he has learned from the parents the journey of pregnancy is a profound and transformative experience that we have just seen not only for the expecting mothers but also for the de- uh, developing baby within the womb recognizing the holistic connection between the mind body and spirit the practice of yogic techniques and rituals during pregnancy gaining prominence garbha samskara the core of this practice lies the ancient wisdom of yoga which views pregnancy as a sacred and interconnected journey yogic philosophy rooted in the belief of the mind body spirit connection that is the yoga that is a union underscores the importance of maintaining a harmonious balance for overall well being incorporating yoga during pregnancy aligns seamlessly with this holistic approach focusing on the physical mental and spiritual dimensions of both the mother as well as the unborn child as john lock stated that mind is a blank canvas or a slate let's nurture this blank canvas of unborn child with virtues and spiritual values through garbha samskara to gain the healthy progeny when a mother is pregnant she has the power equivalent to the mother nature she can inculcate all the virtues among the fetuses right from her womb when mother takes care of this nine months consciously she can give birth to a baby with a higher intelligent quotient emotional quotient spiritual quotient and adver- adversity quotient samskaras are the values and virtues that we want our children should have so such a happiness compassion empathy respect for everyone calmness discipline obedience we really want in our child intellect and human emotion plays a significant role in the pleasure and pains too which man is subjected sant ramdas is an activist sent from maharashtra has composed the renowned manase shlok the verses or mantras to nurture your mind to culture and nurturing the virtues in the mind is very important so it is need of an hour to peep into the emotional world of the fetuses because fetuses possess a mind and emotion too sant ramdas was also a guru of the great king of maharashtra shiv Ch- uh, uh, raja shiva chatrapati in today's world of multiple intelligence and emotional intelligence it is important to understand the emotional world of the fetuses because as per the definition of the emotional intelligence it is imperative to learn 
to realize one's emotion and learn to realize others emotion too if we can comprehend the emotional world of our child who is about to enter in this world we can shape it and nurture it in the best possible way talent and virtues of the child to be in it are not merely dependent upon the genes or on the environment they depend upon the process of carrying out a change in oneself in one's genes by comprehending the changes in the environment it is here that relation in the context of karma between the mother father and child comes yogic practices helps in relaxing softening of our deep tension and blockages help in mind equilibrium and stability of autonomic balances this helps a pregnant mother to tackle stress throughout the pregnancy and during delivery too symptoms like nausea vomiting mood swings and irritability are also in control due to the yogic and garbha samskara practices it is help to integrate different physiological functions and to help dissolve emotional blockages and negative habit patterns that occur during the pregnancy and which are the obstruct which obstruct the flow of vital energy within the body it has a great potential as an effective therapy to tackle stress during the pregnancy and delivery and also help helpful in the good mental physical and spiritual development of the baby there exist three different types of the body physical subtle and the causal body the subtle body comprises 72000 nadis or the energy channels seven major chakras and prana prana energy or the life forces these chakras are the vortex of the energies the prana energy from the universe enters the body through chakras which act as a power station and it further distributes the prana to different parts of the body through nadis there are seven chakras in the physical body located at seven different places which can be activated to function it in a proper manner through pranayam so pranayam is essential for a pregnant woman chakra healing increases vitally and overall well being it raises uh, it uh, raises the vibration uh, clears the aura and enhances the mother child bonding it enhances the spiritual state of the child as well as gets an energetic cleanse and boost when the mother does chakra healing through pranayam for herself the yogic exercises or asanas increases flexibility improves blood circulation and reduces back aches during the pregnancy specific garbha samskara yogic asanas boost the mother's chances of having a full term normal delivery with minimal labor pain and contribute to the well being of both the mother as well as the baby as it is stated earlier the pranayam exercises focus on deep and mindful breathing ensuring the optimal oxygenation for both the mother and the uh, developing baby deep intentional breathing fosters a sense of calm and relaxation laying the foundation for a serene environment within the womb anulom vilom vilom pranayam balances both the side of our brain these techniques not only enhances the respiratory capacity but also manage our emotions thoughts and well being better it also has a calming effect reduces stress and promotes the relaxation for mother and develop nurture the baby mudras or the hand gestures are used to channelize the prana energy from the universe to a specific part of the body they keep the body in respective mode so that body is ready to tap into the abundant energy of the universe there are total 100 mudras are mentioned in our scriptures but we will focus only six of them which are most useful during the pregnancy gyana mudra is a mudra of knowledge it helps to improve concentration and sharpen the memory stimulate the pituitary gland relieves the tension and depression and boost immunity relieves mental disorder the prana mudra increases the prana in the every cell in the body brings stability and balances to the mind removes blockages from the energy channel chin mudra enhances the awareness in the body and the mind it also creates a sense of alignment in the body facilitate optimal functioning of the nervous system this is a chin mudra this is like this adi mudra uh, channelizes the prana in the mind region it is 
often Adi Mudra is like this. The, uh, the baby or the fetus is holding his feast like this. This is the Adi Mudra. Adi Mudra channelizes the prana in the mind region. It is often called the first mudra because the fetus can make this hand gesture right in the womb. It calms the mind, balances both the hemisphere of the brain, regenerates the nervous system, optimizes the functioning of the vital organs, increases the lung capacity and energizes the sahasra chakra. Merudanda Mudra. This is a Merudanda Mudra. It is also known as a spine mudra. It heals and strengthens the spine and cures the back pain, improves the functioning of the circulatory and respiratory system, also aids in detox detoxification of the body and activates all the chakras. Apana Mudra facilitates the free flow of the Apana Vayu. It also called the purification or cleansing gesture. It helps in child's birth process. It should be practiced only from the mid of the eighth month of the pregnancy. Meditation is an important aspect of Garbha Samskara and it is beneficial for the body as it detresses the mind. It involves getting into zero state of mind, which help us to get peace and tranquility and enhance the concentration. Visualizing good things about the baby while you meditate is also a great way to bond and think positively, which can help both the baby and a mother to imbibe Pratipaksha Bhavana is very important during this stage to tackle with the negative thoughts. Positive thinking and a positive attitude can go a long way in ensure, uh, ensuring the mental and physical well-being of the mother, which is linked to the well-being of the baby inside her womb as well. Garbha Samskara helps to develop this eternal bond between the mother and the unborn child. The practice of meditation during pregnancy goes beyond relaxation. It becomes a journey inward. Mindfulness techniques, including guided visualization and loving kindness meditation, helps mother connect with the unborn child on a profound level. This mental tranquility supports emotional well-being and uh, cultivates a positive atmosphere for the baby. Music is another way to develop the baby. It, it is connected with our very own existence. It is said that the universe is correct, created with a sound and that sound is pranava or om. We can say that we are born out of this Shabda Brahma and that is why we feel peaceful and blissful when we chant om. Om is the basic sound of the universe. Chanting it tunes us into the universal frequency and remind us of our connection to everything in the world. Since during prenatal stage, we have a music in every cell of our body. Garbhasaskara states that a baby can respond to music while in mother's womb. In fact, ancient literature says that a baby starts hearing and responding to its surroundings from fourth month of pregnancy. This is the reason why the mother should listen to melodious music, spiritual songs or mantras and shlokas are said to be the beneficial for both mother as well as child. Garva Samskara's music compiles the mantras and chants from the Vedic scriptures, that is from Rigveda, Atharvaveda, Yajurveda and Samaveda. Traditional mantras and chants drawn from ancient Yudhic uh, texts are recited to instill positive vibration in the prenatal environment. The resonance of the sacred sound is believed to create a serene atmosphere influencing the consciousness of both the mother and the baby. It covers the preconception face, womb protection, good health and virtues among the baby and during delivery time. Different religious communities have different uh, compilations and that are time tested and have benefited several mothers. Mantras which are dedicated to the well-being of the child contribute to a sense of spiritual connectivity. Praying or chanting mantra is an important part of Garbha Samskara. It is believed to be good for spiritual as well as holistic development of the baby. Ancient scriptures contain mantras and shlokas which are beneficial for unborn babies because they are blessed with good health and moral virtues. Mantras are and soft music reach the baby inside the womb and help in his or her development. Each mantra has a specific role to play. For example, Veera Rasa Samskara Shloka imparts courage. 
ऋग्वेद एंड सामवेद मंत्र प्रमोट मेंटल एंड फिजिकल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द फीटस यजुर्वेद मंत्र स्टिम्युलेट द सेंसरी डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द चाइल्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल द श्लोक एंड मंत्र दैट वन कैन रिसाइड लाइक विच वी नो दैट गायत्री मंत्र इज रिसाइटेड फॉर द करेज एनलाइटनमेंट एंड शार्प इंटेलेक्ट ऑफ द बेबी एंड एवरी वन नोज द गायत्री मंत्र you can just see here how it is really working it it's uh, we have the shelf it's this is a, a, a protective shelf you can say that how the music is entering into it that there is a positivity of the chanting spreads all over the belly chanting is a you can say that here at the center so how it chakras might be you can say that energize the dissolution of the impression in the mind also takes place so if the bad impressions are there those bad impressions are also goes off and it instills the good impressions so as we have said that the existence of this chakra that i have said it's very important this chakra so healing will take place so womb has a that heart and that heart chakra also get energized through this chakra meditation and therefore it is in, in, uh, uh, chanting is very important for the physical development of mother and the physical development of the child also because it is boosting the energy one then comes the ahara of the mother that the per yogic personality which we call ahara that is a diet achara that is a behavior vihara that is physical activities and vichara that is psychological and emotional activity eating is a sacred practice in ancient time people used to eat food as medicine and not medicine as a food eating right is a sign of respecting the body so they ate to live but today most of the people live to eat we know that the food we eat plays a very crucial role yet we consume unhealthy food frequently because the food we eat ultimately impacts the way we feel the way we think the way we behave and shapes the life ayurveda as well as yoga divides the food into three categories sattvika rajasika and tamasika one should have the highest proportion of sattvika food with some rajasika food and very little tamasika food in one's diet pray before you eat to the creator of this whole universe because praying will send positive signals to the universe and invoke healthy emotions among the child a healthy diet positive thought regular exercise and a loving bond are the components of garbha samskara without which garbha samskara is not possible practicing practicing the simple principles of garbha samskara leads to the blissful experience so garbha samskara transcends the physical aspect of the pregnancy to embrace the profound spiritual and philosophical dimensions grounded in yogic philosophy and spiritual wisdom this practice invites parents to become conscious architect of the soul's journey recognizing the divine essence within the unborn child as mothers engage in spiritual yogic spiritual practices recite sacred mantras and imbue their thoughts with positive energy she contributes to the creation of a positive and nurturing environment that echoes with the harmonious symphony of the life within father also can do this through garbha samskara parents not only nurture the physical body but also lay the foundation for a spiritually enriched life for the soul that is about to embark on its earthly journey therefore garbha samskara becomes a sacred dance between the physical and the metaphysical weaving together the thread of life love and spiritual emotion so garbha samskara is every emotion you feel every thought you think every action you take every habit you built during the pregnancy shakti hi krupa yuktam jeevanam asti that is very important these are my references thank you yes sir yes sir thank you madam 
for your beautiful yes, presentation it was very short but effective very interesting and uh, very educative uh, i will summarize later but now i shall ask uh, uh, the participants the great professors of our country uh, you are not audible sir properly am i audible now yes yes sir I thank yes, you for your beautiful presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, it was very good. It was informative. It was educative, and it was very short and very brief also. It was very precise. Thank you, madam. So I shall summarize later. Now I shall request the participants uh, who are present here to have their observation. Then uh, we shall uh, have. further agenda so now i shall request professor amita mapalmik madam to have her response uh, thank you professor dash it was uh, this event was uh, very um, we were discussing about this and uh, with i was discussing with reena and uh, she was uh, she has such a flow you know in this particular area she has a uh, um, it's a beautiful flow which uh, i i'm usually carried away by her thoughts and uh, i'm usually spellbound by his uh, her area of research this area of research uh, it is it was wonderful fantabulous thank you so much uh, reena this, uh, this was really very very good i um, i really was thinking seriously about this uh, particular topic that uh, uh, garbha sanskar those uh, not have uh, such kind of uh, um, surrounding or ambiance in one's family um, i was just wondering how they uh, you know they are left out um, what can be done about them uh, do garbha sanskar continue even after birth because garbha itself means in the womb i understand that but don't you think that it can extend even beyond that because i have found that people who come from a, a very very uh, so called uh, uncultured family i have no right to say uncultured to anyone but uh, seemingly what see what we can see from the from the uh, empirical world or whatever we are seeing in our surrounding uh, do you think uh, somebody else's uh, uh, ideas can influence an infant so that means some sort of garbha garbha sanskar subtly works even when the baby is just um, a day or uh, a 15 days or one month old does it continue and should it continue because it's this is so very important for uh, for a uh, baby's growth i was thinking i was when i was expecting i was told to read ramayana and mahabharat and scriptures and and i used to read and i used to found, find these scriptures very very meaningful also and uh, um, and these stories very meaningful i was wondering that uh, this has really affected uh, my son but uh, it has uh, in some ways uh, which i can see and uh, i wanted to ask you does it continue even outside uh, when the when the baby is an infant very small just had a query in my mind yes ma'am thank you for uh, such a beautiful uh, summary which you have given of my topic as we have discussed already uh, that i also feel that uh, it's my observation because when i was pregnant that time also i have did it but it happens that there are many unfortunate uh, people uh, that they, they cannot because uh, like there are people that their surroundings is not so so what about them and yes it is possible that uh, that we cannot name it as a garbha but sanskaras continues at the child is born that it is possibly that if we cannot but at home but somewhere and we have seen that like for example in case of the kayadhu uh, that it garbha sanskara was there but when she come back once again uh, uh, to her place that time even though hiranyakashipu was a demon still because of the samskaras which he has uh, the pralada has learned at uh, uh, the narada's ashrama as well as what kayadhu want to give it to him 
she continues and he really say that whatever happens even though the atmosphere is such a demonic atmosphere is there still he is not a demon he even though he is uh, the king of the demon but his uh, thoughts are not a demonic thoughts we can say that so even though this uh, the process is continuous process we cannot say that the now the child is born now sanskaras has stopped no sanskaras are continues that we cannot able to stop it out what mother or being a parent i can say that rather than the mother what parent want to imbibe or instill the values among the child they can but as we always state that the way my first day of the school is so important similarly my first uh, my when the conception takes place it's so important because that time we can because here the child is in a comfort zone when the child enters into the physical world then child need to realizes my child needs to discriminate what is right what is wrong even though the child is uh, very small you, i can just want to give an example uh, when a baby is there when uh, uh, whoever takes the baby and you are very loving and kind the baby goes and baby reacts and smiles it out but you just do some kind of pinch to the baby or tease the baby baby will not come to you so it means baby has that intellect to discriminate between the right and the wrong so we have to nurture only we we are just providing the platform to the baby and baby takes up what the baby wants it so similarly in the garbha samskara also we are providing the platform with the good thoughts it's like i want this bouquet a beautiful bouquet so i'm putting the beautiful flowers into it now how you the, uh, the bouquet will looks it like, i know that because it will looks beautiful because i put the beautiful flowers into it similarly now i will put these things. it's like a, i can say it's a designer baby i want it because designer means it doesn't mean that a crafted but designs that is of the design of the virtue design of the kindness compassion spirituality healthy baby healthy baby we want it so because if the progeny is healthy the nation will be healthy then healthy in all the sense healthy not only physical and mental spiritual and ethical healthiness is also important who can describe or distinguish between what is right and wrong i hope ma'am i am able to give the answer yeah, yeah, definitely definitely very nice thank you so much yeah. गर्भ संस्कार no doubt it is it is very it is very much accepted by all but my my question is that we will obey and follow garbha sanskara no doubt but at the same time when a lady is pregnant uh, he should uh, obey the advice of a doctor is not it and he she will uh, do all these things in his daily works and his fooding fooding habit and all these thing depends on the advice of the doctor uh, this is one thing uh, second thing is a fetus and child is there in difference between baby and fetus fetus is a, is the very initial stage of a baby can we uh, can we say that fetus is also fetus is also um, baby or not but these are the my simple observation but uh, however uh, your uh, your deliberation is very nice and very informative very educative no doubt okay thank you sir uh, as uh, what sir you stated can baby and uh, fetus will be different according to me uh, baby and fetus even though in a scientific manner we can say that in a medical way, like uh, terminology we can say that they are differing but for a common man baby and fetus are one and the same 
for a common man because my this fetus who will become as my baby and i never call it as a baby i call it as my baby only i never call as a fetus i call this my baby only so whatever i will do right now it will be reflected right later on so as you it is like a, as you so so you so naturally what i am going to so right now at this initial level i am going to get it later on it's because garbha samskara is not only regarding the food habit it is regarding your behavioral pattern it's re uh, regarding your uh, physical exercises it's regarding your um, uh, uh, mental relaxation nurturing your it's like a nurturing your mind nurturing your body and nurturing your soul and, and simultaneously you are nurturing the baby who is in your womb so you are doing right now because the, as i said there are the mudras so that this is the mudra which i said this is the very adi mudra that is um, of the fetus is like this in the womb and this is very important because when you see all our um, uh, which is called our uh, points are there which are related to our entire body organs so naturally we are nurturing through it the mudras which are there the meditation uh, the food which we are uh, taking the exercises the pranayam it's nurturing the the baby in the womb so uh, for me as a mother i cannot differentiate that fetus and baby for me fetus is baby science may differ it science may say that fetus is fetus fetus don't have a right but for me my baby has all the rights and that right is to learn the good thing and that good things need to learn since the beginning what i really want to give it the best to my baby i am ready for that i hope sir i can i have sir you are not audible sir it's sir your uh, microphone is off okay okay madam thank you thank you very much thank you yes really sarbani madam uh, will you speak something sarbani madam sarbani madam will you speak something pramod babu ha madam i have some objection yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma Dr. Indra, uh, regarding fetus and baby, fetus is in the womb. We medically term the uh, baby in fetus uh, in womb to be fetus, mm. and when it come out, that is the nomenclature. That uh, there is no um, such. I mean, as she told that uh, I can, uh, I always assume that uh, my, I mean, I don't. Uh, I assume that it is fetus or something, but it is my baby. So it is a physical, uh, it is a medical terminology. So, but uh, there is no such uh, difference between uh, fetus. But uh, medically, the fetus is in the womb. The child in the womb is called fetus, as far as my knowledge goes. That's all. I just <laughs> intervene. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. Uh, there is no, there is no, yes. actually yes. no barrier, no barrier calling fetus to be baby because in, actually uh, in um, commonly we assume that uh, the, my baby is uh, um, kicking me. So these things are the usual term, terminology applied in, uh, in our society. But uh, medically it is the baby in the womb. When in the mother's womb, it is called as fetus. That's all my objection. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, absolutely right, ma'am. Because uh, medically we call it as uh, fetus, but whenever it is called a pregnant uh, mother, pregnant yeah, yeah. mother will never call it as my fetus. It will, she will always say that yes, yes, it is yes. my baby only. Yes, and yes. That, that's so. Yes. I also agree. I, I also agree. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, Pani, madam. Sir, 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 namaskar. Am I audible, sir? Yes, ma'am. Namaskar. Sir, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Rina Prudhkar, madam, for presenting a beautiful topic that is sanskar, and it is very important for us to imbibe uh, the child uh, with a good sanskar because that is uh, that will be the that is the deciding factor. Uh, uh about the uh, development of personality uh, among the children 
so you must give importance on the sanskar uh, that uh, the child should be nurtured with a good sanskar and that uh, that is that you have uh, well presented uh, it is uh, it is uh, it has been started uh, from the womb uh, from the st stage of the womb and uh, that is uh, that you have well presented on uh, different examples like abhimanyu and others uh, uh, from uh, our epics and uh, i think it's very very important uh, for us to imbibe our child with good sanskara so that he or she can be a good citizen with all good uh, moral values characters uh, that she uh, or he will have Uh, and uh, our nation can be we can connect uh, not only for sanskar but we can connect it from uh, globally that a child if a child will be uh, developed with good sanskaras from the uh, stage of the womb then uh, our nation will be developed it is a very very broad concept that we can connect it from uh, from womb to a nation or a international national stage uh, that is uh, the character of a person that uh, will helpful and uh, will be a productive citizen of the society that uh, the sanskar can decide thank you thank you very much madam it's very beautiful presented by you thank you madam and uh, sir sir another thing i can uh, this is not also this is not relating to sanskar but uh, sometimes it is also noticed that the children who are uh, not, who are not uh, imbibed with uh, good sanskaras but uh, in the in by, by the influence of environment they can uh, uh, they can be they can rear their parents or they are Uh, in in the, in their environment they can develop they can be developed with good sanskaras that is also there is also possibility that if it is it has not been started from the womb but in the present uh, so environment uh, one can also learn sanskaras like, like we are uh, learning it in the class uh, philosophy forum class we are also uh, learning sanskaras from all intellectuals and uh, and i am really thankful to this uh, philosophy families that uh, we are learning sanskaras from this uh, uh, class and uh, all uh, programs thank you very much sir thank you thank you sir madam for your beautiful observation sir best, best wishes for philosophy family now I shall have my observation, and we shall conclude this session. <clears throat> I really appreciate the honest presentation of uh, Rina Madam. It is honest because she is the honest mother of her honest child. So that is the greatness of a mother, because mother is the creator of the child. Madam very beautifully said that there should not be conception accidentally uh, we should choose to be conceived this is a very great thing uh, because in philosophy there is a dichotomy between uh, determinism and free will uh, we say that uh, uh, nothing is in our hands a child is born a child receives the womb of a mother according to his or her past disposition past sanskar uh, this is a common belief therefore there is rebirth there is there is cycle of uh, birth and death uh, let it let it be accepted it may be metaphysical it may be uh, something uh, mystical and it may be logical also but let it be accepted but in addition to that madam is speaking of the role of freedom whatever may be the determining characteristics of the birth of the child in the womb we are free to change the destiny of the child from the womb itself that is the role of the parents that should the mother should because 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 not only medically not only medically the child is treated the child is treated psychologically there is a psychological connection between the mother and child because there is a 
biological connection biological connection so the food mother eats the feelings mother uh, releases release it releases so all these things have effects on the uh, fetus of uh, all the child I, i i am calling child not fetus because we don't say that that is medical it may be termed our child and when we say our child my child here comes the belongingness so here comes the sense of caring the sense of loving the child and the mother becomes very courteous very careful very sincere very serious about the psychological physical and spiritual growth of the child but but the point is mother alone cannot do this other family members including husband mother in law father in law uh, even brother in law sister in law those who are associated with the, the mother in her large house this should be very cooperative this should be very cooperative otherwise a mother we otherwise the mother will suffer negligence and that that becomes the stress and strain of the child so many many times we 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 experience that if the mother is disturbed at the time of conception the child is born abnormal i have so many examples i have seen so that should not be the food should be very selective and the thought should be selective the habit should be selective at that moment because as madam said that is it is a beautiful platform and an appropriate platform to give sanskar to give certain habits thought habits sanskar means thought habits action habits to the child so that is very very important so we should as as a charity begins at home so sanskar begins at the womb so that is the school the womb is the school the womb is the moral institution uh, which nobody can see but mother can see mother can feel it okay so it is a very sensitive topic and to to say i salute all the mothers of our country of the globe those for for whom we we have generation we have creation so i i appreciate madam because she is very frank she is very um, uh, and she is speaking about uh, her own conception or her own delivery her own nurturing the womb uh, in the fetus in, uh, in her own and it that 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 shows her frankness her clarity uh, that is the great thing of a speaker thank you madam for accepting our invitation and delivering your talk very precisely i love your talk today because you spoke very precisely that is the great thing of a speaker if we can speak big things so the volumes within half an hour uh, that is great thing thank you madam thank you i am grateful to you and uh, yes anything madam you will speak ma'am uh, no sir it's a, it's a wonderful uh, platform in fact i always say that uh, philosophy family is a really family as uh, uh, shabrani madam says that yes we are also gaining the samskaras we are the children and we are so uh, we are really learning from each and every session even though we cannot able to attend the sunday session but the way every time you put the uh, youtube uh, link so we can able to watch the youtube link and link and we can able to learn what we have missed so it's like that it it becomes it's like a every day our uh, it has become like our habit that we want to do it that we have missed now we will watch it out afterwards if we have missed the talk on particular day and it's a really good platform that we are learning and sir uh, it's like a we are we are a children we are we are learning so uh, since the childhood we are learning until the death we will be learning and this is the best platform that you have started sir uh that where we really may not have met face to face but still we are one family that's wonderful uh, that uh, feeling is there and as you said that feeling is really important that love belongingness is very important yes, so yes. I, we feel that we are a 
part and parcel of this philosophy family. And Thank from, you, sir. Uh, yes, madam. From your from from your speech, uh, I can have some slogans that uh, my womb, my family, my womb, my nation. Yes. This is my word. Thank you, uh, sir. By listening your talk, I I am really grateful. And you, I will all love your smiling face. Thank you, Thank madam. You. And that 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 is a great thing. And we are grateful to uh, Professor Amita Malvik, madam, uh, for presenting you to us in yes. this, in this pl platform. And she has also promised that, uh, and also given the numbers of other professors of your department. And very soon we shall we shall be inviting them to deliver talks. And you please help us, madam. To um, make coordination between us. Thank yes, you. Sir, and you also, you also contact with many other good speakers, so that we shall in in yes, them. Sir. Okay. Surely, sir. Surely. Thank you. And I, I am grateful to all other participants, Mita uh, Malvik, Madam, Indira Devi, Madam, Sarvani, Madam, for their kind hearing and for having their beautiful observation. Thank you all. With this, the session is declared closed very successfully, very Thank peacefully, you. very peacefully. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Dr. Dad. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much uh, for this beautiful uh, instrument of uh, the talk. And uh, it always adds, you know, something or the other. And you can imagine how fortunate I am to have Rina in my department. <laughs> and I really, it, it shows, madam, it shows. It yeah. is reflected, it is reflected. Language yeah. is insufficient to yes. express, Thank you. express anything and everything. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Rina. With this, the session is declared closed. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.